I'm actually in facility services, but I have a twin that teaches in SOLA, I believe, uh, Dr. Michael Viola. We are not the same person. Um, I am a graduate of St. Mary's class of 1999 from the business program. And I also have a master's degree from uh, KSOE. Um, so I am St. Mary's through and through. There were a couple of things that I was gonna share with you um, about how I'm using Gmail. And then I have a, a trick for you from Kristen um, on how she's use, using uh, Gmail as well and some of the work that she does. Now, admittedly, I don't use Moodle and I don't understand Moodle. So some of what I'm gonna show you might be, might be things that you can do within that um, structure for how you manage your classrooms. Uh, but for all of the other business stuff that happens around the college, um, a couple of the tricks that I'm thinking about might help you manage your email in particular. Um, for me, I like to have about 20 emails or fewer in my inbox at any one time. Those are the emails that need my attention right now or today. That's really hard to do when you have um, faculty and staff listservs and committees and all kinds of other things, uh, student requests, um, colleague requests, all of those kinds of things take up our time and they clutter our inboxes. <clears throat> and so what I've really been trying to do is to use filters and labels to have Gmail do some of the work for me. So when the pandemic started, um, I'm a member of the coronavirus task force, right? And so when it first started, there were about a thousand emails, it seemed, that were coming out every single day. So I said to Gmail, these are things that I want to keep records of because I need to remember what happened when, if I ever have to go back to, um, you know, take a log and look at a log of what happened. Um, but I was finding that it was taking me some time to mark all of those messages because there were so many. Um, what came in, what got cleaned, um, you know, all of those things that I needed to track. So I set up filters to say, anything that is sent to the coronavirus list, I want you to label it for me. So I don't have to do that. So that is one example of just asking Gmail to label it. So then when I go through and I read it and I'm done with it and I archive it, it goes to the folder or the label. Now, another use of the filters or the labels uh, could be when I'm sending um, things to the all dot list, for example. So when we have an incident, just imagine, um, and I need to send uh, emails out to the community, um, it's important for me to be able to log that as well. So I will also set up or have set up filters that say, anytime I send a message to these lists, I want you to label it and make a, put a copy in a file. So I can go back and I can see all of the messages that I sent and when I sent them. So you can imagine how um, that could work if you're emailing a committee um, or a group of students for any reason. Um, so that's kind of labels and filters in a nutshell. I can talk about it for hours, but I'll just kind of give you the teaser and I'll be happy to help show you how to set them up if you need help. The other thing that I think is helpful is um, anything that is sent to the voluntary um, faculty staff list serves. I have Gmail uh, set up a filter so that it labels them and puts them in the folder and skips my inbox. So when I have time and when I'm interested, I'll go and I'll look, but they don't clutter my inbox. Now the all dots, I have those labeled but it, goes, it still goes to my inbox. So you, there's really a lot of flexibility in how you um, can manage all of that stuff coming in um, you know, so that you can be as effective as possible um, with the emails that you do have in front of you. Um, the other feature that I was gonna mention that I'm not sure if you're, that you know about is called the snooze function. Has anybody see, seen the snooze? So that's turned into one of my favorite tools because I started to keep you know, separate to-do lists of things, things that I wanted to remember to bring up in my next one-on-one -on -one meeting with somebody. And so what I found in, or, or even a Zoom link, you know, you're invited to this um, presentation and here's the link and here are the details. So I'll read it, 
most of the time. And then um, there's a, a place at the top where you can snooze the message and you can have it reappear in your inbox at a later time. So for today's um, information or webinar, if you will, um, I could set that up to snooze because if I got it last week, I don't need it cluttering my inbox, um, but I'm gonna need it for the meeting. So I'll usually set it to show up about a half an hour before the meeting. Um, and so it doesn't resend the message, it just brings it back uh, to your inbox. And so when you snooze things, you'll see on the left-hand side of your portal, um, there will be a place that's, that shows snoozed messages and when they're gonna show up again. Now, what's cool also about the snooze is that if you've sent an email to somebody and you wanna follow up with them, if they haven't followed up with you, so maybe a student was supposed to do something and you wanna make sure that they really did it, um, you could go back to your sent folder and find that message that you, that you sent and snooze it for tomorrow or a week from now, and it will put it back in your inbox. It won't resend it, but it will put it in your inbox and you'll be like, oh yeah, I meant to follow up with that student, I better do that. Um, so I use that a lot with my one-on-one -on -one meetings um, and just you know labeling things so that I don't have to keep separate records, I can just go back uh, to that folder for that person and see all of the pending things that I meant to follow up on. Um, the other trick that I was going to share that Kristen actually shared um, for us in our um, in our last CET meeting was how she's using the the Gmail slots, appointment slots, and um, different signatures. So with the appointment slots, you can block out some times on your Gmail calendar. Um, so let's just say, you know, you want to set from two to five on Wednesdays for open office hours. And you can go to your calendar and you create an event like you normally would. And across the top, there's a place where you select um, appointment slots. And you can set them for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, um, however you want to do it. And then you just you know, kind of create these blocks and then students can go um, and, and sign up for various, you know, um, slots for open office hours. Um, there's a link to that calendar that you need to share with the students so that they know how to find the slots. Um, and so she's using um, the signatures option at the bottom of the screen and I can share my screen um, but you can easily if you set up more than one signature within your gmail account you can actually switch it pretty easily so what she's done is when a student asks for hey can I set up a time she will write back sure see below or, or something like that right see the information below and she changes the signature for that one response and it has her calendar link and her Zoom credentials link. So she doesn't have to go and find it. She doesn't have to type it. It just makes it very efficient so that, you know, um, it saves her time. So those were kind of some of the tricks that I wanted to throw out there. Um, and I'll be happy to, to screen share or show you some um, of the places where you can find all of those tools if um, we have some time. Okay. Yeah, I think Hilda also had some had some things she wanted to share. Um, thanks for getting us started. And I was uh, I was going to share my screen as well, but I think my my inbox might make you nervous, uh, Michael, because uh, <laughs> it's definitely more than twenty. So <laughs> so so Hilda, you want to? Sure. Yeah. Um, hi everyone. I'm Hilda Ma. I'm a teaching English department. I won't take too long. I'm going to just show a few examples of how I use G Suite um, in the classroom, and especially last semester. Um, the first thing I'm going to show is um, Google Sites. Um, this is a project that I had students do at the end of the semester. It was a self-reflection project in English Four, which is the first year writing class, and this was. Um, you know, both as a standalone assignment in composition, because they're practicing multimodal writing when they're writing, you know, and creating their own um, website, right, um, as opposed to kind of the traditional alphabetic essay writing, but it's also set up to align with a seminar program, since we're um, set up to prepare students for some of the skills that they need to develop further when they get to seminar. So in every seminar class, for those who aren't familiar, students, um, 
have to write a self-reflection essay at the end of the semester in all four seminars. So this is kind of getting them started with some of the skills. I'm just going to start by showing you a really brief video that I recorded um, for the FEG symposium a um, couple weeks ago. It's just three minutes talking about the Google site project. And then I'll um, talk about the other tools as well. So let me just go to share screen. Sound. Here we go. OK, everybody see that? I'm going to talk about a new assignment that I developed for my English 4 composition courses last fall to further strengthen our alignment with the seminar program. The assignment was a multimodal self-reflection project designed to prepare students for the self-reflection essay that's required in seminar one. So um, the assignment took place at the end of the semester and asked students to revisit the composition program's five learning outcomes and choose three to cover in a personally developed website. And we use Google Sites as our platform since everyone has access to it in our Google Suite and it's also fairly easy to navigate as well. Um, the assignment asks that students demonstrate progress that they've made towards each of those chosen learning outcomes by developing pages for each outcome on their Google site and creating content that assess the process of learning. So here are a couple of examples. Um, here's just what a typical student's um, multimodal self-reflection site look like with the home page, and then you have um, a separate tab for each of the learning outcomes. So if we take a look at her page for the outcome dealing with intellectual discovery through the writing process, here she embeds some slides and she's able to show you how she um, used brainstorming to help her with the writing process. Um, and also here's an example of her um, using a screenshot of a Moodle discussion forum. So she's able to use that as evidence as well in order to make her claims. Um, here's another example of a student talking about um, a learning outcome that addresses systematic analysis. And here she used a video. I'm just gonna show you a couple of seconds of it. In this video, I will be addressing how I engaged in systematic analysis in my rhetorical analysis essay. And I'm actually gonna jump um, just to show you the range of what she did here. During the step of the process, I engaged in systematic analysis by carefully observing the text and highlighting evidence that demonstrates different rhetorical strategies. And here's an example of a student addressing um, the learning outcome that has to do with examining assumptions. This is with the more traditional combination of images and text, which she did pretty effectively actually. So um, final thoughts. About the multimodal self-reflection assignment, it encourages students to revisit classwork and reflect on their own performance, thus integrating metacognition into the way they think about their work in English 4, and it helps students develop the habits of mind necessary to become reflective practitioners and ready to tackle their seminar self-reflection essay. Okay, so that was just a quick, um, short, and dirty explanation of how to use Google Sites for one project. Um, I can quickly show just a couple of other um, tools. Um, let's see, where is that? Here we go. So um, some a couple of other things. This is the basic, you know, Google Doc as a whiteboard. And I use the same whiteboard for every class, you know, to open it up. And I just put the most recent agenda on the top. Um, sometimes we type directly on the Google Doc and treat it as a whiteboard. Other times I'll link to like a Jamboard or um, slides. So like, for example, um, in this class, I, we did a Jamboard. This was um, an exercise where they analyzed campaign ads during the election, so Trump ads. And this, they did it in the breakout rooms as a way to record their tasks, right? So there's the Biden ads. Um, I thought it was interesting, though, that some students talked about how they were frustrated by Jamboards, actually. They felt like, you know, it was kind of like Google Slides, but it limited them in terms of what they can do. So um, for another class, I did Google Slides instead, and um, just the feedback was better. They preferred it. So very similar Jamboards, you know, I just color coded it so the groups don't get mixed up with which slide is theirs and, you know, prepared it ahead of time with their tasks on there. And they actually preferred, I did a mid-semester polling and they talked about how they would rather just use slides from now on instead of Jamboard. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and one more thing is um, using Google Form for self-assessment. So this is especially helpful for um, like a seminar class where participation is, you know, a big part of their grade. 
I would actually put a link at the bottom, you know, every agenda for them to fill out a self-assessment form. So when they click on it, um, it takes them to a quick form to fill out, just, you know, um, checking off, you know, what kind of contributions did you make today? You know, did you ask a question about the text? Did you help facilitate? Did you just make a general comment, but it didn't really tie to anything, but you just get them to take responsibility for the kind of contributions that they make. It helps them, um, you know, think about ways to tie this into their final self-reflection project, right? When you have to think back on what they've done, it helps you when you're trying to grade, right? And give them participation grades at the end of the semester. And also, um, you know, you can set it to send them a copy so they can go back and look at all that, right? And think about, you know, ways in which they can like prove or talk about the progress they made in shared inquiry, right? Um, for their final self-reflection project. So some of these were just the Google suite tools that I use. Um, so I'll stop there and maybe we can talk about later if folks have questions. So I, I like both. I like I like what, what Michael, what you presented and, and Hilda, I like what you uh, represented. I didn't think about um, switching from Jamboard to Google Slides uh, just due to the level of flexibility and just some of the feedback. I, I do like what, because I teach a lot of asynchronous and online, that co-authoring of content that you can also use as an example from semester to semester to help students, you know, this is a good example of how to do this assignment or, or things like that. Uh, yeah, I, I just really, I really like that idea. And I was gonna share, I was gonna share some things. I was actually gonna open up my email just to show you one, how, how messy it is. Um, two, just to give light to some of the labeling, the filtering and things like that. So. I'll, I won't take too long because I want you guys to also to ask questions and things like that, but um, bear with me. So the first thing is, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar just with the different types of inboxes you can have at the top. And so, you know, sometimes the forums and the listservs can get a little jumbled, jumbled. So it's nice to have a separate inbox for that. And then I can focus on my primary. I want to open up my primary right now because this all this is all being recorded. But all of this is is great just to organize. Now, getting back to what um, Michael was saying as far as filters. So if you see this uh, this bracket, so for some of those meetings that we know we have committees for, I created Google Groups for, it, and we started using those as Google Groups. And what this does, it creates brackets, and you can uh, identify them easily that way, or you can use a label a filter and a label that color codes your email. And another way for, the, for this to, to kind of help you out. So for instance, when you guys do those IT service tickets, it always sends us a notification that says, hey, Marguerite has a, a question about this. So what happens if, you know, I don't really need all those notifications. I can go through all my labels on the left-hand side and tickets are somewhere on here, somewhere, tickets come on. I don't know, uh, here we go. So here's all my tickets. So if you set up things for like annoying emails or things that you want to get what get get rid of in mass, you just click that, select all, and trash the whole thing instead of going through individually. I don't know if a lot. That's one of the benefits of having a filter, and this is more just for upkeep. Um, that was just like a quick thing, just for email, just showing you how labels and filters. The other part of it is when you start when you guys are looking at um, just. Google Docs as just a word, uh, as like a whiteboard, as Hilda was pointing out. What I stopped doing, I stopped actually saving documents in my learning management, so like so Moodle or where I teach, I teach with Canvas. And so I stopped giving, I stopped putting in Word documents and PDFs. I started actually putting in Google Docs, the, a link to a Google Doc, because how many times have you had to change something in your syllabus? And had to go through the whole process of taking it down, resaving it. When really, if it's a Google, a link to a Google Doc, you just change it, and that change is global. It just wherever that link is, that change will reflect wherever that is. Instead of going to multiple sections and pulling that off. And so, those are just some of the things I wanted to mention. Um, but I think I'm going to open it up. Any other how tos or Thoughts, questions? Have you guys ever used templates for your emails? So for instance, um, a lot of your YouTubers, 
and uh, e-commerce, they Gmail allows them to create templates for their mailing list. But as a professor, how many times have you written some of those emails pertaining to your syllabus? Or how many times have you written the same email to that D student that's asking for extra credit? So if you start having like extra credit template or extra credit, you don't have to recreate the wheel every single time because there is a template feature in Gmail that you can start saving some of these emails and making them templates so that you're not cre recreating them every single time you respond to someone. That's another little tidbit. Michael, were you about to say something? No, I was just gonna point out that I um, had provided a presentation uh, to um, a campus department recently. And so I put my slides in the chat there. Um, yes. It explains a few of the um, features that I talked about, but I'll be happy to demonstrate them as well. If, there are questions. Is it possible? Uh, can you tell me where? I didn't know you could save emails as templates. Do you know where I would um, go to do that? Yeah, let me. It's in. It's in the settings setting. So you, I'll, I would have to tinker with it and send. I'll, I'll send out a uh, uh, an email because it's actually in the settings where you would have to flip it on in the overall account. So let me see here. So you would click on the cog, not the settings here. And I wonder if it's in advanced. Oh, yep, it's in advanced. And you see templates? Yep. So you hit the cog, slide all the way to the right to advanced, and then create your own template. So in the one thing about the pandemic, I've, I've learned to YouTube and I've been YouTubing a lot of these, these influencers and how, how they like how like how do these people sell you products from Instagram? You know, I know there's MailChimp in there somewhere, but then it's I'm always thinking from how can I streamline and workflow students, especially if I'm teaching multiple sections? Um, what are some things? And so, you know, from I have a page. I copy all of my feedback on one page so I can drag and drop and maybe just tweak them a little bit and to personalize them a little bit. But these are just things when it comes to G Suite, how, how does that help you do that? Google Docs, keeping things in, keeping things in the cloud, being having it accessible. Uh, Hilda, I really I just really like how you use Jamboard and, and Google Slides, as well as using Google Docs as a whiteboard, because especially in this day and age, everything has uh, has to do with um, co-authoring and co-creating people, you know, not only just, I, they always call it like the sage on the stage, but actually being able, having your students contribute to what they're learning. And so that that's just great. Um, yeah, it's nice to have a record too, right? They can right. always go back, right? And just right. go to that whiteboard as a home base and find activities from previous classes and reflect on that work again, right? If you need to review it or something. It's just nice to have, I'm gonna miss that part is having that record all there, you know, rather than erasing that whiteboard physically at the end of the day and it's gone. Right. Um, yeah, just something to kind of consider. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I won't be able to duplicate the Jamboard, you know, when we go back to in-person, but I'll probably still do the Google site project, you know, as a multimodal self-reflection um, project. Um, how do you how do you how do you uh, see G Suite impacting so the, the skills that you that you've garnered during the pandemic and moving into you know this fall and fall and beyond how do you foresee yourself uh, in person and using G Suite? That's a good question. I've been kind of thinking about that a lot, and like I said, you know, I, I will still use the Google site um, as a final self reflection multimodal project because it's skills that I think you know even though it's a first year writing class. Uh, multimodal writing is something that they'll continue to use outside of the classroom, you know, as, and in their future careers, I think. Um, but I think there'll be days where I'm going to say, bring your laptop to class, you know, and if it's an activity that we're going to do um, where I want us to keep a record of it, I want it to be erased at the end of the day, I might say, you know, bring your laptop and let's open up and actually do this, you know, Jamboard or slide activity and actually keep that, you know, as part of our class records. Um, I'm reluctant to let go of the laptop now. <laughs> Before yeah. I was like no laptops, but right, now right. given how helpful using G Suite has been, there might be days where we'll still use it in the classroom, but we're there physically with our laptops instead. 
Zara, I see, I see, I see you shaking enthusiastically. What, what, what's going, what's going through your head? No, I feel that way too. Like there's more. Before it felt kind of like um, a, a hassle to try to figure out how to integrate it, but since we had to, <laughs> since we've already had to do that, um, I, I I just feel the same way as Hilda. I could see, you know, just letting students know if you have a laptop. No worries if they don't, because I I still know that there are students. You know, I wouldn't want the lack of the technology to like you know, set any students behind, but just to kind of encourage um, that, that like using the technology collaboratively. I really like that. Marguerite. Yeah, I was just thinking, Hilda, I loved your um, kind of your agenda and how you added to it and kept a record. <laughs> and it occurs to me, you could probably still do that in an in-person class and just project it up. Instead of writing on the whiteboard, you could Put it there and still have it because I know there's times I've used like a word doc to take notes that I want everybody to see the notes as I'm taking them working on something I mostly do it because my handwriting is so bad um, that what I put up on the board always looked awful and this gave me an opportunity to do it in a way that it was easy to read but I could see doing what you do and just um, continuing to do that I think it would work really well I think you're right yeah I agree and now that they've given us iPads from that FPG thing, um, you know, Grant, it's kind of nice to be able to do that, you know, and not have this big, you know, mm -hmm. laptop in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Clap it up, team. I don't know how many seconds. Well, thanks, everybody. Could we get a copy of Hilda's slides? Is that possible? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. I'd love that. Absolutely. Um, who should I send it to? Could I should I send uh, send it, yeah, send it to Kamika and um, yeah. we'll, we'll figure out a way to uh, to get that done. Sure. No problem. Thanks, James. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Thank you, guys. Great job, everybody. Yeah. Don't judge me on my email. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll I guess we'll head back. You didn't show us the really messy one, James. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys in the main room. <laughs>